Question number one. What type of rules are identified by the use of the terms shall or shall not in the code? A. Optional rules. B. Recommended rules. C. Prohibited rules. D. Mandatory rules. Answer. D. Mandatory rules. Question number two. What type of rules are identified by the use of the terms shall be permitted or shall not be required in the code? A. Prohibited rules. B. Required rules. C. Permissive rules. D. Optional rules. Answer. C. Permissive rules. Question number three. What does the term accessible mean as applied to equipment? A. Guarded by locked doors. B. Elevated off the ground. C. Admitting close approach. D. Requires a special key to access. Answer. C. Admitting close approach. Question number four. What is the meaning of accessible as applied to wiring methods according to PEC? A. Capable of being removed or exposed without damaging the building structure or finish. B. Installed in a closed space with limited access. C. Not required to be visible or easily accessible. D. Requires special tools to access. Answer. A. Capable of being removed or exposed without damaging the building structure or finish. Question number five. A fuse is an overcurrent protective device that consists of a circuit opening fusible part that is blank. A. Heated and severed by the passage of voltage through it. B. Cooled and severed by the passage of current through it. C. Heated and severed by the passage of overcurrent through it. D cooled and severed by the passage of over voltage through it. Answer. C heated and severed by the passage of overcurrent through it. Question number six. An electronically actuated fuse has a control module that provides blank. A voltage sensing, B current sensing, C power sensing, D temperature sensing. Answer. B. Current sensing. Question number seven. A circuit breaker is capable of making, carrying, and interrupting currents under specified abnormal circuit conditions. Which of the following is an example of specified abnormal circuit conditions? A. Low voltage conditions. B. Overheating conditions. C. High humidity conditions. D. Short circuit conditions.
Answer. D. Short circuit conditions. Question number 8. In an oil cutout, what is completely immersed in oil? A. Contacts and the fusible portion of the conducting element, fuse length. B. Only the contacts. C. Only the fusible portion of the conducting element, fuse length. D. None of the above. Answer. A. Contacts and the fusible portion of the conducting element, fuse length. Question number 9. In accordance with PEC, when examining equipment, what factors should be considered? A. Suitability for installation and use, mechanical strength and durability, B. Color, shape, and size, C. Age, brand, and price, D. Material, texture, and weight. Answer. A. Suitability for installation and use, mechanical strength and durability. Question number 10. What can be used to evidence the suitability of equipment? A. Its weight and dimensions. B. A user's manual. C. Its listing or labeling. D. Its color and texture. Answer. See its listing or labeling. Question number 11. According to PEC, the voltage rating of electrical equipment shall not be blank than the nominal voltage of the circuit it is connected to. A greater, B less, C equal, D unrelated. Answer. B less. Question number 12. Completed wiring installations shall be free from blank and from grounds other than as required or permitted elsewhere in this code. A overloads, B arc flashes, C short circuits, D none of the above. Answer. C. Short circuits. Question number 13. Equipment intended to interrupt current at fault levels shall have an interrupting rating sufficient for the nominal circuit voltage at least equal to blank. A. Twice the current that is available at the line terminals of the equipment, B. The current that is available at the line terminals of the equipment, C. Half the current that is available at the line terminals of the equipment, D. None of the above. Answer. 
B the current that is available at the line terminals of the equipment. Question number 14. No conductors or equipment shall be located in blank locations unless identified for use in the operating environment. A dry, B damp or wet, C both A and B, D none of these. Answer. B damp or wet. Question number 15. What is the effect of some cleaning and lubricating compounds on plastic materials used for insulating and structural applications in equipment? A. They have no effect. B. They improve the materials. C. They strengthen the materials. D. They cause severe deterioration. Answer. D. They cause severe deterioration. Question number 16. What is the standard that describes accepted industry practices for good workmanship in electrical construction? A. ANSA. NECA. 2-2015. B. ANSA. NECA. 3-2015, C, ANSIA, NECA, 1-2015, D, ANSIA, NECA, 4-2015. Answer. C. ANSIA NECA 1 2015 Question number 17 What should be done with unused openings in electrical equipment as per PEC? A. They should be left open. B. They should be closed with any material. C. They should be closed to afford protection substantially equivalent to the wall of the equipment. D. They should be closed with any non metallic material. Answer. C. They should be closed to afford protection, substantially equivalent to the wall of the equipment. Question number 18. What is the minimum distance that metallic plugs or plates should be recessed from the outer surface of non metallic enclosures? A. 1 mm. B. 2 mm. C. 4 mm. D. 6 mm. Answer. D6 millimeters. Question number 19. What should be the condition of electrical equipment's internal parts, such as bus bars, wiring terminals, and insulators? A. They should be covered with foreign materials. B. They should be painted. C. They should not be damaged or contaminated by foreign materials. D. None of the above.
answer. C. They should not be damaged or contaminated by foreign materials. Question number 20. Electrical equipment shall be blank to the surface on which it is mounted. A. Loosely secured. B. Firmly secured. C. Temporarily secured. D. None of the above. Answer. Be firmly secured. Question number 21. Wooden plugs, driven into holes in masonry, concrete, plaster, or similar materials, shall blank be used for mounting electrical equipment. A. Always. B. Sometimes. C. Not. D. Only in residential buildings. Answer. C. Not. Question number 22. Electrical equipment that depends on natural circulation of air and convection principles for cooling of exposed surfaces shall be installed so that blank by walls or by adjacent installed equipment. A. Walls prevent airflow over such surfaces. B. Adjacent equipment prevents airflow over such surfaces. C. Room airflow, over such surfaces, is not prevented. D. None of the above. Answer. C. Room airflow over such surfaces, is not prevented. Question number 23. Clearance between top surfaces and adjacent surfaces shall be provided to dissipate rising warm air for electrical equipment designed for blank. A wall mounting, B ceiling mounting, C floor mounting, D underground installation, Answer. C. Floor mounting. Question number 24. Which of the following shall be identified for the material of the conductor and properly installed and used? A. Connectors and terminals. B. Circuit breakers. C. Lighting fixtures. D. Electrical generators. Answer. A. Connectors and terminals. Question number 25. What should be used to connect conductors to terminal parts without damaging the conductors? A. Wire binding screws or studs and nuts. B. Solder lugs. C. Pressure connectors. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Question number 26. 
what should be used to cover the free ends of conductors. A electrical tape, B solder, C insulation, equivalent to that of the conductors, D identification markings. Answer. C. Insulation, equivalent to that of the conductors. Question number 27. What should be used to splice conductors for direct burial? A. Wire connectors, or splicing means, listed for such use. B. Soldering with a fusible metal, or alloy. C. Brassing. D. Welding. Answer. A. Wire connectors, or splicing means, listed for such use. Question number 28. What should be done, before soldering splices? A. The conductors, should be twisted together. B. The conductors, should be secured mechanically, and electrically. C. The conductors, should be covered with insulation. D. The conductors, should be cleaned with water. Answer. B. The conductors should be secured mechanically and electrically. Question number 29. What size of conductors can be connected using wire binding screws or studs and nuts? A. 3.5 mm square or smaller conductors. B. 5.5 mm square or smaller conductors. C. 8.0 mm square or smaller conductors. D. 14 mm square or smaller conductors. Answer. B 5.5 mm square, or smaller conductors. Question number 30. How can conductors be connected to terminal parts? A by means of pressure connectors, solder lugs, or splices to flexible leads. B by means of wire binding screws or studs and nuts. C by using electrical tape. D by using glue. Answer. A. By means of pressure connectors, solder lugs, or splices to flexible leads. Question number 31. How should conductors be spliced or joined? A. Using any method. B. Using brazing, welding, or soldering with a fusible metal or alloy. C. Using wire connectors. D. Using glue. Answer. B. Using brazing, welding, or soldering with a fusible metal or alloy. Question number 32. The temperature rating associated with the ampacity of a conductor shall be selected and coordinated so as not to exceed blank. A. The highest temperature rating of any connected termination, conductor, or device. B. The average temperature rating 
of any connected termination, conductor, or device. See the lowest temperature rating of any connected termination, conductor, or device. D. There is no requirement for coordination of temperature ratings. Answer. See the lowest temperature rating of any connected termination, conductor, or device. Question number 33. Conductors with temperature ratings higher than specified for terminations shall be permitted to be used for blank. A. Ampacity adjustment only. B. Correcting ampacity only. C. Either A or B. D. None of the above. Answer. C either A or B. Question number 34. For motors, marked with design letters B, C, or D, conductors having an insulation rating of blank or higher shall be permitted to be used, provided the ampacity of such conductors does not exceed the 75 degrees Celsius ampacity. A 60 degrees Celsius, B 75 degrees Celsius. C 90 degrees Celsius, D 120 degrees Celsius. Answer. B 75 degrees Celsius. Question number 35. Separately installed pressure connectors shall be used with conductors at the ampacities not exceeding the ampacity at the blank of the connector. A. Highest temperature rating. B. Average temperature rating. C. Listed and identified temperature rating. D. None of the above. Answer. See listed and identified temperature rating. Question number 36. When a tightening torque is indicated as a numeric value on equipment, what should be used to achieve the indicated torque value? A. A hammer. B. A screwdriver. C. A calibrated torque tool. D. A wrench. Answer. See a calibrated torque tool. Question number 37. Under what circumstance should the conductor or bus bar having the higher phase voltage to ground shall be durably and permanently marked by an outer finish that is orange in color or by other effective means? A on a three wire system, B on a four wire, Y connected system, C on a four wire. Delta connected system where the midpoint of one phase winding is grounded. D on a two wire system. Answer C on a four wire. Delta connected system where the midpoint of one phase winding is grounded. Question number 38. Which of the following types of equipment shall be field or factory marked 
to warn qualified persons of potential electric arc flash hazards. A. Electrical equipment in dwelling units. B. Electrical equipment in other than dwelling units. C. Electrical equipment that does not require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance. D. All of you above. Answer. B. Electrical equipment and other than dwelling units. Question number 39. What type of label shall be field or factory applied to service equipment rated 1200 amperes or more in other than dwelling units? A. A temporary label. B. A permanent label. C. A warning label. D. A danger label. Answer. B. A permanent label. Question number 40. When is service equipment labeling not required, according to PEC? A. When the equipment is located in a dwelling unit. B. When an arc flash label is applied in accordance with acceptable industry practice. C. When the equipment's nominal system voltage is less than 1200 volts. D. When the equipment is not likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized. Answer. B. When an arc flash label is applied in accordance with acceptable industry practice. Question number 41. Parts of electrical equipment that in ordinary operation produce arcs, sparks, flames, or molten metal shall be blank from all combustible material. A. Enclosed. B. Separated. C. Isolated. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Question number 42. Circuits for lighting and power shall not be connected to any system that contains trolley wires with a ground return except for blank. A. Car houses, power houses, or passenger and freight stations operated in connection with electric railways. B. Industrial parks. C. Commercial buildings. D. All of the above. Answer. A. Car houses, power houses, or passenger and freight stations, operated in connection with electric railways. Question number 43. According to PEC, what should be marked on reconditioned equipment? A. The model number. B. The date of manufacture. C. The name of the original equipment manufacturer. D. The name of the organization responsible for reconditioning the electrical equipment. Answer. D. The name of the organization responsible for reconditioning the electrical equipment. Question number 44. What markings are required 
to be placed on all electrical equipment. A. The manufacturer's name, trademark, or other descriptive marking. B. The model number. C. The date of installation. D. All of the above. Answer. A. The manufacturer's name, trademark, or other descriptive marking. Question number 45. What should be done with unused current transformers associated with potentially energized circuits? A. They should be removed. B. They should be disposed of properly. C. They should be short-circuited. D. They should be kept as a backup. Answer. C. They should be short-circuited. Question number 46. What is required to be field-marked in service equipment at other than dwelling units? A. Maximum available fault current. B. Installation date. C. Manufacturer name. D. System voltage. Answer. A maximum available fault current. Question number 47. If a disconnecting means is required to be lockable open, what should it be capable of? A being locked in the closed position. B being locked in the partially closed position. C being locked in the open position. D being locked in any position. Answer. C being locked in the open position. Question number 48. Where should the provisions for locking or disconnecting means remain? A only with the lock installed. B only without the lock installed. C with or without the lock installed. D they should not remain. Answer. C with or without the lock installed. Question number 49. What is the minimum horizontal working space required when rear access is required to work on non-electrical parts on the back of enclosed equipment? A 500 millimeters. B 600 millimeters. C 700 millimeters. D 750 millimeters. Answer. D750 millimeters. Question number 50. Smaller working spaces shall be permitted where all exposed live parts operate at not greater than blank. A30 volts RMS, B42 volts peak, C60 volts DC, D all of the above.
Answer. D. All of the above. Good luck and God bless.